Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be tying up this Trico Sparkle Spinner. Pretty simple little fly. It's got a little bit of added uh, diamond dub in the thorax just to give it a little bit extra sparkle. But basically, this is a fly that I've got in my arsenal. Something I'm going to use early in the morning. Uh, if I'm out on the stream, uh, 7, 7.38 AM. I'll probably tie this on and uh, float it over a couple pools to see what happens. You can always have a look as you're walking the banks and just checking some of the spider webs and you'll often find little trichos like this. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and I'll enter your name into the next draw that we have for some stickers, some of the flies we tie on the channel, as well as some fly tying materials. Let's have a look at the material list and get started. All right, let's get a fresh hook into the vise. Today we're gonna to be tying our spinner on a Firehole 316, and we're gonna be using a size 18 for this one, and I believe those go down into size 22, so you can tie your full range of flies on the Firehole. If you don't have Firehole, not to worry, you can use something uh, similar, or even a straight shanked midge hook should work fine. I like these ones because they have a nice wide gap and uh, a little bit easier to tie some of the smaller flies on. For thread we're going to be using black 70D. If you have something smaller and you're tying some of the smaller sizes go ahead and tie that on. Uh, you just want to be cautious of how much thread you're putting on there. So we just wrapped on right behind the eye and we'll wrap back just to create a fairly thin body. We're going to be using some uh, mayfly tails or some micro fibats. These ones here are from Fly Tires Dungeon and they're a little bit on the larger size but uh, I really like these ones. They're, uh, they've got a lot of um, malleability so they're easy to pose and they do come in a range of colors but uh, I did order these recently and I think I ordered about six different colors and only received uh, about three different ones so their inventory might be running low. So we're going to tie those five bets in on the side of the hook shank and uh, for this pattern we're just going to be using two. If you prefer to use maybe three you can go ahead and just add one little wrap of thread underneath the back there just to help kind of keep it lifted up a little bit. You can notice we've got those tied on fairly long and we want to make sure that we're kind of maximizing on how much surface area this fly has because it's uh, these tails are going to help keep it propped up in the water fairly well. So just make sure we have that adjusted and it's on the side of the hook shank there. And we'll wrap that back and want to make sure try and keep our body as even as possible. Once you got those locked in you can go ahead and give them some position. You can just pull them to the side and uh, they pose fairly nice. We'll go ahead and we'll cut off the butt ends of those. So for the wing on this fly we're going to be using here we've got some of the Montana Fly Company's uh, Widow's Web, but you can use any sort of these uh, fibers like EP Fiber or Extreme Hair. Um, it's a bunch of different ones. Congo Hair, I believe, will work as well. So just take a small diameter of that and then we're going to tie that in. Not right behind the eye, we're going to give a little bit of room and just a little forward of the midsection on the body. And I like to just kind of twist that before I tie it into place just to kind of tighten those fibers in the wing a little bit. Make sure that they're all seated fairly nicely. Just give one loose wrap over top and then get the wing seated. Add a couple wraps to lock it and then we'll twist it to the side. And then we'll do a figure eight cross 
over just to kind of even it out. This might take a little bit of practice and you just want to use a um, little bit of thread torque just to kind of get those wings sitting perpendicular to the hook shank as much as possible. We'll go ahead and add a couple more wraps just to lock that in place and then we'll measure our wing. You can start a little bit longer and if you want to cut that down a little bit more you can go ahead. Got lots of extra material we'll save that for the next fly. It's a little bit long so we'll go ahead and we'll trim that up a little shorter. You want to make sure that those splay out to the side and those along with the tail those are gonna sit your fly right in the film of the water and it's gonna sit there nice and comfortably. You can add a little bit of floatant to these as well and that'll also help. So for the thorax we're just gonna add a little bit of diamond dubbing. If you don't have diamond dub you can use something like ice dub or uh, Arizona Peacock will work nice. You want to do a fairly thin dubbing noodle here. You don't want to overdo it. You just want to basically cover up our thread wraps in between the wings. So we'll just add enough for a couple wraps. We just want to be able to do a figure eight and maybe a couple extra wraps. Kind of bulk up that thorax just a little bit. You can take your time doing this. You want to make sure you're not trapping down any of those fibers that you've tied in for the wings. And just make sure that you've hit all the surfaces in the front and the back of each wing. Over top and underneath. And a little bit too much dubbing here so we'll take off some of that extra. Now we'll just go ahead and we'll finish this fly up. You can pull everything back. Add a couple of wraps just to clean everything and we'll grab our whip finish tool go ahead and we'll give that a quick whip finish you want to just be careful you're not trapping any materials in the eye there we'll give it a second one for a little added durability looks good we'll trim the thread And we'll just add a dot of head cement here. And then this fly is ready to put in the box. We just got a little bit of head cement in the eye of that. So I'm just going to take a piece of waste feather and we'll clean that out before we put this one in the box. You can do your final adjustments there, and then that one's ready for the box. Hey Fly Tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel, and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips, and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.